Joining me in the studio now is entrepreneur Paul Parry. Paul is from Wolverhampton. He and his partner Karen set up the business Bad Dog Designs in April 2014, making clocks, one of which you can see here to my right. Paul, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Oh, you're very welcome, Ruth. Um, so you have brought in a clock with, with you today. Why clocks? Um, why not? Um, <laughs> I've always been fascinated with time and watches and things. And then I, I thought, yeah, clocks, Nixie clocks. Not many people make them. Yeah. It's something I can do. So when did it all start? When, when did this passion for clocks and, and making things begin? I've always been making things. I, I was the child at three years old who was taking my toys apart. Um, I wasn't brought toys after the age of five. I was taken to the tip yeah. to get things to take apart. And it's, it's gone on from there. I've always made, built things. But the, the clock started in um, 2014. I mean... Can you tell me about what we've got here? Because this is an incredible piece, an incredible yeah. clock. It's very, it's very different to what you'd normally see. Yeah, this is a, a steampunk clock called Tesla. Um, and it's a, a Nixie clock, and it uses the Nixie tubes to tell the time. And it's made from a 1920s voltmeter, which uh, came from France. That's the big wooden bit at the top. I think we are actually seeing the video of it in the, yep. in the dark as well now, because obviously the Nixie tubes are best seen in the dark, aren't yes. they? Yes. Um, so... The Nixie tube, what, 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 is a, what is the Nixie tube? A Nixie tube, tube before, before we had LEDs, LCD displays, um, early electronics used Nixie tubes to uh, display information. Okay. They used to put them in, inside old petrol pumps yeah. and old weigh scales and things. And we stopped using them in the UK in like, the 70s. Yeah. Uh, they still used them in Russia in, up until about the early 90s. Um, it was a Cold War thing. They were impervious to nuclear attack and things yeah. like this. There's no semiconductors or, or silicon in there. And they're just literally like radio valves. Yeah. Um, they don't wear out, they, they don't get hot at all. They will last 20, 30 years. And this one here, I believe this clock here, is going to Singapore, isn't it? Because you, you, you're selling them across, around yes, the world yeah, now, aren't the, you? This one I actually made for a client in Singapore and he's, he's actually coming across to pick it up. Wow. Rather than risk um, shipping it. I, I, I do have quite a good market in Singapore. Yeah. Um, I've sold several clocks out there. It seems to be something in the Singapore culture. They like clocks, timepieces and things like this. And there are some avid collectors and they see one of my Nixie clocks being something totally different that they haven't seen before. Yeah. And, and, and they have to have one. I mean, it's, it is brilliant. I mean, how, what's the price range of these, clo these clocks? Um, little clocks start from about £300. OK. Um, and I mean, we've got one behind you yeah, there, that, that one's about, relatively medium size there. That one's about £1,200. OK. Um, but the little ones start at about £300. OK. It, it all depends on the time, the detail, and, and the size of the tubes as well. And, of course, you make them all tailor-made, so someone can come to you and, and, and say what they want from it, and then you can go off and make yeah, it. Yeah, there's, there's no two the same. Every single clock is made from scratch out of something genuinely old and vintage. Yeah. It's made for the person, that they're all signed. Um, a lot of them have, um, I don't know, like the person's date of birth on it or a quote that they want. Yeah. Um, it's made for them. No one else will have one. And um, it's all in your own time? It's all in my own time, yes, evenings and weekends. Because you've got a full-time job alongside doing this, haven't I you? I have as well, yes. <laughs> How do you fit it all in? How do you make time to actually make these clocks? Um, my partner, Karen, she is very, very understanding and helpful. She looks after the house, the, the accounts and everything, and she just lets me get on, build the clocks. Um, buy the parts, assemble them, and, and just let me be me, really, which without Karen, there wouldn't be any clocks. And so how many have you made? Um, to date, just shy of 200. That's, 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 that's not brilliant. Bad. 200, a yep. lot of hours sat, sat making clocks, I can yeah, imagine. They're not, they're not as big as this one, obviously. Yeah. You know, that's quite a big one. There's lots of small ones and, and lots of intermediate ones. Brilliant. Well, we'll have to stop it there for a second, okay. but we'll be back in a few minutes after the break where we'll be talking more about, about your clock business. Paul, we've, we're surrounded by your beautiful clocks. Um, they're all made from recycled materials, aren't they? Yes, that's right. Every single clock is made from something genuinely old, um, something which would have been thrown away, uh, something which is no use mm -hmm. to anybody anymore. They're all, um, they're all upcycled. Um, it's a growing trend. I'm a member of the uh, Upcycled Hour on Twitter, where many people get together and all they do is create new things from, from old things to go in, in the home. Um, that's made from a 1920s voltmeter and the lid off a, another old piece of test equipment which dated back to the 40s. All the, the um, Decatron tubes on the front are original 1940s, 1950s. The Nixie tubes again date back to the 1960s and 70s. 
And where do you get the materials from? Um, I get the materials from all over, antiques fairs, eBay, um, jumble sales. Um, whatever takes your fancy. Whatever takes yeah. my fancy, wherever I can see something. I, I can look at something and say, oh, that make a lovely clock. I mean, this... Yeah, where's that from? Um, I actually got two of these, and these were going to be thrown out of an old physics laboratory. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, that would make a really nice clock. So I grabbed it and put it to one side got around to it and, and, and turned it into um, into this. And this one is particularly special because this has been on display in Liberties in London, hasn't it? It's not been on display in Liberties, but I showed it to um, Ed Burstall, okay. the MD. Every year, Liberties do a, an open call where they, they openly invite any craft or designers to Fantastic. come and pitch to, um, to Liberties with a, a view to getting them stocked in the shop. Okay. And I actually got straight through to see Ed himself and I'm still in talk with their, their buyers so fingers crossed. So great prospect for the future there. Yeah, yeah. And do you have a favourite out of all your clocks so far? I do have a favourite. Uh, my favourite would be the, the Gemini clock. Unfortunately it's not here, it's in, in Singapore but that actually has a, a steam engine on the top. Oh, um, wow. Steam comes out uh, it tells the time in two, two countries. It's a very clever clock. And you've also got, you're making one at the moment, it's, isn't it a five foot robot yeah, yeah. type we're, one? Yeah, we're making um, Wilson the robot. Um, you'll, you can see him on the website. Um, he's going to be going in the foyer of a hotel in Singapore and he's a big brass steampunk type creation. Fantastic. The first thing people will see when they walk in. That's brilliant. I mean, I know your work has been spotted as well by Dragon's Den, Dragon Den's Theopetus, hasn't it? Yes, this is, this is true. Um, on Theo does a small business Sunday and he, he scours through Twitter and he looks for um, businesses and it's open to any business at all. All you have to do is tweet to Theo Cathetus on a Sunday between 5 and 7.30, give him a brief one liner of what you do and don't get me wrong, thousands of businesses tweet to him. But the following day on, on the Monday at about 8 o'clock um, he picks six businesses and he adds them into his um, SBS club as such and um, two weeks ago he picked me and ever since it's gone it's gone crazy yeah I imagine that that's that's going to be great more well, marketing for your business isn't it yeah because all the other SBS winners well, there's like a, a directory of them and you get to go to the ICC once every year for a big networking yeah. event uh, get to meet Theo himself have your, your photo taken with him um, you get presented with a certificate of your award. Fantastic. So it's all good stuff. And what's your biggest sale to date, would you say? Um, my biggest sale to date, I would this say... This one? That has to be getting nearer. Yeah. Um, but the, the big robot, obviously, when it's finished, will probably be the big sale. Um, that one was about 5,000. Oh, uh, wow. The robot will be more than that. Yeah. And how can people find out about more about, about your business? Oh, just look on the, the website. Just Google uh, Bad Dog Designs or yeah. it's um, www.baddog-designs.co.uk. You should be able to see UK. this on the screen now if you want to go and, and find all, out more. Every, every clock I've made to date is on the site. Brilliant. Well, um, Paul, thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's been a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Well, it's time for another short break now, but join me after where I'll have more headlines from across the region.